TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. So by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see a little warning screen. This screen has really been coming in handy lately. Appreciate it. Don't forget, twitch.com is where you can catch a live stream. The username's at the bottom of the screen. Patreon.com is where we post Monday through Friday. Probably five to seven days times a week. Premier League highlights on there, a bunch of shows that can't be put on YouTube and things of that nature, man. Just lock in with me, man. But this is Police Interceptors. Y'all know how I feel about this show, man. I wish Lisa would. I hope we get a Lisa appearance. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. True, true. It's the early hours of the morning and Interceptors Richie Gatland and Andrew A.J. Terry are out on patrol in the marked X5. Richie Gacklin. Gacklin. Oh. The roads are pretty quiet, but the automatic number plate recognition cameras have picked up a suspect van a few miles away. ANPR is like that little old lady who will not mind her business. <laughs> if you're trying to be a law abiding citizen, move into her neighborhood. She's going to protect you. But this ANPR. I don't know how anybody does any crime out there. Man. We've had an activation for a, a no insurance, which we have an idea where it might be heading. And now it's just a case of trying to figure out which way they're going to go so we can intercept them. Family man Richie's favourite subject at school was geography, and tonight he and AJ are putting their navigation skills to work to hunt down the van, and they're soon behind it. There we go. That's the one. It just pulled out of there. It did, didn't it? The police database tells them the van doesn't have insurance, so Richie and AJ are going to give it a pull. Got it. It's just popped out of one of the kind of neighbouring estates, which is a little bit suspicious for this time of night as to why they've been there. Hey, Robin! <laughs> but when Richie sticks on the blues, the they driver decides he doesn't want to stick around. LA from Tango. This is a crazy vehicle to be doing robberies in. Like, this is a dumb criminal. Oh, 310 Foxtrot. Urgent vehicle failing to stop. Dumb criminal. AMPR mark of quiet vehicle stop. Can I have authority for initial pursuit, please? Trained, authorized, suitable vehicle, and currently low risk speed of 50 heading out of Darlington. In a straight up race, the van would be no match for the Interceptor's high spec X5. As the pursuit's heading onto narrow country roads, they have no choice but to follow and wait for other units to join them. Four or five, that's the question. Clear safe. Three, three, three. So we've got a air support. X5 is an SUV, right? Yes, yes, we got it. Speed six zero miles an hour, still low risk. Potentially going towards the motorway. The vehicle is registered outside of the area. The speed is six five miles an hour still low risk if the van does go on the motorway the interceptors will have more room to maneuver but right now they're in the middle of nowhere farmland it's easy out here nothing to worry about now richie and aj are more worried about what the driver is doing vehicle wrong side of the road medium back to low risk wrong side of the carriageway for the right hand bend the pursuit's headed into a village where the roads are thankfully empty the van carries on breaking the speed limit. Continuing through the 30s at 5-0. You know what this reminds me of? An Isle of Man, like the, the TT time trail tracks and the video game I'll be playing. Sometimes, this, was this a track on there or something? No other traffic on the road, no pedestrians. I feel like I remember running into this bush. Pedestrians. Get a stinger ahead of Shildon. Potentially heading towards Shildon area if we've got anyone with a stinger. Vehicle is committed right, right, right. South A6072. A6072 towards Darlington. 
The runaway van's now heading back in the direction it came from. And now he's on the main road, the driver puts his foot down on the opposite side of the road. Thankfully, it's free of oncoming traffic. Vehicle is wrong side of the roundabout, committed A68. Richie takes the legal way round and keeps his prey in sight. They thought they were going to get away with that one. The van's now hammering it at more than 80 and continuing to make increase. Whoever driving this van is not trying to go to jail today. Increasingly reckless moves. Vehicle was temporarily wrong side of the road, back to the right side of the road. Speed 9. Not gonna lie, but if I had to take a guess, buddy is going to jail though. 100%. Zero miles an hour, staying on his side of the road. Speed is 100 miles an hour. Every cop out. With the driver Produce. smashing the speed limit and taking even more risks, they need to end this pursuit before someone gets hurt. Can we have authority for T-Pack, please? <laughs> Other units are closing in. Once they arrive, they'll try to box the van in, but then it turns off the main road. Vehicle's turning left, 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 A6279 towards Darlington. The van driver's done everything he can to try and shift. <laughs> you gonna get six months suspended? If the advanced driver, Richie, and failed. So if that, I doubt it. Now, he tries a different tactic. Vehicle's braking, braking, standby. Attempt to reverse ram. The van's trying to disable the cop car, but Richie's too quick for him, squeezing to the side to avoid getting smashed. Vehicle is now behind us, reversing. The van's now trying to spin round and get cop car, but he tries a different tactic. Vehicle's braking, braking, stand by. Attempt to reverse ram. The van's trying to disable the cop car, but Richie's too quick for him. Squeezing to the side to avoid getting smashed. Bro's pulling out all the stops, ain't he? He's trying to get negative. He's trying to get diabolical. He's trying to get physical. Vic was now behind us. Reverse. The van's now trying. Six months suspended system. Sis suspended. Ah. You might get a little bit of time. Trying to spin round and get away. Contact. But Richie's blocked him. Get out the car! Get out the van! Decom, decom. No, no, the passengers run off into a field with AJ hot on his heels. I'm police! Stop where you are! Back to the car. Help with the driver and AJ yeah, legged it into a field in pursuit of the passenger. I'm police! Stop where you are! I'm police! You can forget about it. Once you make contact with a cop, boy, they like Robocop. <laughs> They on your heels. It could be the fattest cop in the world. Well, he fighting like he running for Sunday dinner, ain't he? Get on the floor now! On oh, police! Get on the floor! Get on the floor now! On the safe now! On the floor! Stay there! Do not move or you'll be tasered! Less than 50 yards into the field, the runner has given up. Put your arms in the small of your back. AJ's got his man. Both arms. I feel like, like that was super descriptive. Put your arms on the small of your back. Just could have said, put your arms behind your back. Hello. Stay down on the floor. <laughs> put your arm out in front of you. My <laughs> arm is sweet. What I want you to do yeah. is scoot your knees up underneath you and stand up. Now listen, don't do out daft. I'm not going to run, I'm All right. Well, stranger things happen. All right. Are you injured? No, I'm right. Then. Just tired from running. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> You're dafty. Well, this is polite. <laughs> You're, You're dafty. You lost your shoe. He's not the healthiest of lads. He's run across a muddy field. What can I say? He lost his shoe. He's never going to run fast, is he? <laughs> a van's come for the two suspects. And Richie's first in with the driver. That's the reason, mate. Is that all? That's it. The driver of the vehicle, kind of, I think he was more in shock than anything else. We've come round and shattered the window, and then basically dragged him out of the vehicle quite quickly. The passenger has decided to make off on foot, so he's not innocent if he's running off like that. Colleagues have checked the vehicle over, and there might be some items from a burglary, so they've been locked up on suspicion of burglary, failed to stop for police, dangerous driving. Um, and he's admitted he hasn't got a license, but I doubt that's the real reason for him not stopping. The two arrested men will have to answer some questions about the contents of the van. But they're not the only ones under investigation. As with all cases involving a police car in a collision, a senior officer, in this case Pete Tate, 
has come to check everything's been done by the book. My role is just to investigate the collision itself, to make sure the officers have, have carried out the procedure correctly, that it's been safe and what they've carried out uh, authorised and within training. So, I mean, one of the first things I'll do, obviously, look around the scene, get the vehicle details. I'll speak to the driver, which in case was PC Gatlin. Probably 10 metres in front of the I'm going to let you know, let me stop you right here, senior officer. No one gives a f almost curse. No one cares. <laughs> Where that tree is, it just hit the brakes and stopped dead in the middle of the road. Care, AJ said, attempt to reverse ram. At which yeah. point, done our technique and gone down the outside of him. Yeah. As soon as we've gone down the outside, looked at him, he's just whacked it in reverse and he's tried to basically J turn the vehicle round. Yeah. I've had no option other than just to basically wait. Whacked it in reverse and he's tried to basically J turn the vehicle round. Is it? That's the first time I've ever heard somebody ever say J turn. Is this am I, is this real? J turn. What do you blood? What is that? And, and, and it seems just like a U. -turn. Why can't we just say U turn? And I've had no option other than just to basically wedge him immediately because I didn't want him to go any further. Contact. You've got, well, you've got him out. You've shot the window. I've shot the window for the shock factor. Yeah, yeah. And then dragged him out. Get out the car! Get out the van! While Pete gets the van driver's version of events, Richie has a look at the damage he caused. I knew he was going to wedge himself, so I had to make more of a wedge. That, to be fair, is probably the best place if we're going to take any damage. It's on the rear bumper. It's not near the axle or the chassis or anything else like that. It's part and parcel of our job, really, unfortunately. And collision investigator Pete's happy that everything's legit. So they're trained for this. This is a trained actual maneuver, and he meant to hit him exactly where he hit him at with the exact portion of the car he you hit him with. Determined to get away, so it became quite dangerous. So ultimately, nobody's injured. Both offenders have been arrested. There might be stolen property in the back as well, so I'm delighted with the result, really. The only person who won't be delighted is the police mechanic. And now for a question. How many interceptors does it take to fix a bumper? It's barely on the wheel, that. That's better than right. That's all right. That's push oh. The answer is five. One to give it a kick. One to use a pry bar. AJ, just don't burst the tyre. There you go. And three to stand around making helpful suggestions. See? Minimal damage. Seven workshop. And it won't take at least two weeks to fix all of that. And now the dust has settled, AJ has a moment to reflect on the man he chased. Oh, police! Stop where you are! And then nicked. Don't do out daft. Uh, I'm not going to run, I'm not going to run. Well, he seemed like a decent bloke. He's probably just... Shut, Shut up, man! He's got a hard time, he's got a hard time, whatever. He seemed like a decent bloke. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get chatting to these... <laughs> thing is, right, you get chatting to these people and you realise... AJ is just a kind person. Like, what is going on? How much have you got in common? Like, he's 30 year old lad. You? What did he call him again? He's all I'm not going to run. He, what did he call him? You wiggler? What did he call him? He's got two oh, kids. <laughs> He did the wrong thing, didn't he? He was a naughty boy. <laughs> the driver was later convicted of dangerous driving and driving with no license or insurance. He was banned from driving for two years and received eight months behind bars. The passenger... Oh, he actually got some time, eight months. ...was arrested for unlawful taking of a motor vehicle and the investigation continues. No further action was taken in relation to the items in the back of the van. Free bike. It's a nice little bike. Boom, brother. Yes, mate. That was Alice. Do you like that? Good driving. That was mean. It's raining cats and dogs, and interceptor Liam Sewell is hoping for a peaceful night on patrol. It's nearly midnight now. The weather's coming really bad. It's like driving through a river, to be honest with you, so... I'm kind of hoping we don't get any jobs where I have to get help the cat. Dog handler Liam loves pizza, pursuits and the mighty Middlesbrough FC, but he doesn't like the rain. Nightmare weather for working the dog, to be honest with you, because all the scent will be washed straight away. You know, even chasing cars in this, it's hard enough to just keep the car on the road as it is now without a vehicle making off. I'm not gonna lie, yesterday I was driving in the rain in Florida on the highway. My, I need new front tires, and I'm talking about, I was going 
ever so gently out here. You know what I'm saying? I, it was the uh, traction light was coming on. It was puddles. It was construction. I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> Rather, I got a nice car. Or, uh, all maintenance done or not, I'm not doing it. I've got all the weather gear, yeah, but I'm a fair weather cop, to be honest. So I'm hoping I don't have to get out the car in this. Get me air wet. Thankfully for Liam and his luscious locks, the storm soon passes. But the wet roads are causing chaos for motorists. As he approaches the end of his shift, a call comes through about a nasty smash. Two vehicle RTC involved in a car and a motorbike. Information is that the car's on its roof. The rider of the motorbikes ran off into the estate, so we're going there to um, basically assist and try and locate the, the motorbike rider. If there's the car on its roof, there's going to be some serious injuries, I would have thought. If it's hit a motorbike, I can't believe he's ran away. People run for all sorts, might be a disqualified driver, could be a nick motorbike. Loads of reasons, but hopefully I'll get the opportunity to ask him when I catch him. As he gets closer to the crash site, Liam receives an update. Liam, go straight towards Cutting Hill Drive. Yeah, male and female, but the only description is the females wearing white trousers. The lad will stop you that teenage. So now he's looking for two people that have run from the car, not the motorbike rider as first thought. Yeah, it sounds like it's the occupants of the car that have run off. A male and female, females described as wearing white trousers. The male's stocky teenager, apparently. Meanwhile, officers dealing with the motorcyclist have received some alarming information. It's not a motor. Caltech from 407. Is this the motorcycle that we're talking? This is not a motorcycle. What is this? Is this is a Vespa. I can't. I don't like when people call scooters motorcycles. Maybe because I'm a motorcyclist, but it just rubs me the wrong way. That's like calling a scooter a a a, a, a scoot like a kick push scooter. One of these, like a Vespa. Like, don't disrespect a motorcycle like that. Information. Caltech from 407, Mr. Epson's of the opinion that this is a deliberate act rather than a collision. We've got to get these cars. The motorbike driver's saying that this car's deliberately rammed him up the backside. You know, and if it has done that, it's quite serious, isn't it? You know, you're going to cause someone some massive injuries coming off a motorbike. Lucky enough, today he's just walking wounded. Well, isn't that calling the pot? Black. What is it? What do you call it? What's that saying? Don't they do tactical contact on motorcycles? How dare you? <laughs> if injuries coming off a motor, you know, and if it has done that, it's quite serious, isn't it? You know, you're going to cause someone some massive injuries coming off a motorbike. Lucky enough today, he's just walking wounded. <laughs> Area search now, see if we can find this lad and lass who's walking about. They're going to be skimping in and out this estate somewhere. It's like a rabbit warren, though. They said they was that. Another unit is also on the lookout, and they've picked up the male driver. As Liam turns a corner, he catches sight of a girl wearing white trousers. There she is. Ah, fight now, not see her now. Hey, love. Is that where you are? You're okay, thank you. Hey, How come you left the scene that car? How come you ran from the car? She drunk. The car around there. How round are you done? Why have we left no car? 49, I've got the uh, female detained as well. Car? Yeah, look, you're covered in mud. Right, so if you start talking to us, otherwise you're going to get locked up. We've got the female detained, we've got the driver detained. So we're going to bring them both in on suspicion. Ain't no way no female accidentally got a muddy knee and wearing white pants. They too, they too particular about their outfits. But he know, he using that like, nah, buddy. You ain't just slip and fall. Ain't Another assault. Right. You know, they've used a vehicle and caused someone some injuries. It's a serious, serious job. They could have killed the lad. He's on a moped and he's being rammed off. And she stinks of booze. I bet the driver's over the limit as well. They'll both come in and we'll sort out what's going on in the morning. The girl is taken off to Middlesbrough Nick and Liam goes to the scene of the crash to find out what's happening. God damn! What happened? <laughs> How do you do this? happened the vehicle that's on its roof has been sat behind the moped he's come down here on his moped he's been hit just to the, the side of where i'm standing now you can see the start of the debris on the road come off his bike his helmet's landed just there he's slid onto the grass verge cars hit the lamppost flipped over 
and these mopeds continued all the way down the bottom and uh, the first thing he said to the W officer for calling it a moped salute uh, and these mopeds continued all the way down the bottom and uh, the first thing he said to the bobbies is that they've done it on purpose some high speed and the guys look at you be alive he should be dead he should definitely be dead get hit rear ended like that Liam's next stop is custody to book the girl in that's AM while he purposely hit any motorcycle or out here at least when I was in Chicago that's an attempted murder expected partner in crime has to sit and wait his turn both seem to be denied being in the vehicle, so, you know, maybe it wasn't them in this. Imagine but. trying to purposely do that to a, 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 a bike or anybody and your car flipping over. I'm talking about this is like instant karma right now. Instant pain. People like Matt's descriptions at 5 o'clock in the morning, covered in mud, running around Thornby. This lady's nearly finished getting booked in. We've got the driver of the vehicles just waiting to come through in the uh, the next one. We won't book them in at the same time because the link to Dunham shouting there. Excuses, reasons across the Cussy Centre. So he'll be up next. The girls quickly and quietly off to the cells. Next up is the driver, and he's nowhere near as compliant. Hey, listen, get off me. Listen, will you get off me, you stupid little. Excuse me. Listen, why you've been arrested. Listen, yeah. listen I'm not running up above it. Listen, don't well, try and hurt me. No, no listen, dude, there's no baby like that. If he's only been. The things don't all surround me like that. Made me look like a racist. The reason why they're surrounding you is because you're volatile and aggressive. Well, what would you do if you've been wrongly accused? <laughs> you stupid little. <laughs> She's in the cell. We're going to go and book, muck your mouth in. Probably going to have to give these hand because he's going to end up kicking off, I think. Um, I've used some of my charm. But unfortunately, the suspect goes from potty mouthed to actually needing a potty. Oh, he's on the just a dirty, filthy beast, isn't he? He's just playing up, being an absolute pain. I'm glad I got the girl, because if that was me, I'd have been devastated. <laughs> uh, nah, me too, no cap. But he just pee peed on himself. It'll be all over your boots and your legs. A dirty, dirty animal. My name is. Now I'm a scumbag. <laughs> I'm a race in the car crash, and I just took the car there to the lower. Well, this is not. The proper way to process your grief, buddy. We'll talk to a counselor or something. I've been back out smashing it in 2021. Blue 99 on the roadside. A bit of cannabis out there as well. That was pocket. It's got some pills. Have you been in a car accident tonight? Yes or no? The nurse is trying to assess him to see if he needs hospital treatment, but he's not engaging. So he's going to get sent to hospital anyway, just as a precaution. And we'll have to do the blood procedures up there. Me on yeah. Unfortunately, he's going to be in amongst the general public up there, probably shouting and bawling. Now, I know we've got to look after his welfare, but he's tried to kill someone tonight, him driving that car. And now he's gone up there and he wasting more taxpayers' money. Yeah, he's getting AM. I said AM. He's getting an AM, right? The talk sounds like he's getting an AM charge. He's nearly got the alphabet and drugs come out of his pockets, and it's attempted GBH and dangerous driving. So you know he's got a attempted GBH. That's that's a he's got a big long list of uh, charges there. He's likely to be remanded, and as he said, there I'll see you in 2021. Well, awfully, the driver was charged with Section 18 assault, driving whilst disqualified and under the influence of alcohol, dangerous driving, and having no insurance. The female passenger was arrested for being concerned at the assault. They were both released on bail whilst the investigation is ongoing. So we don't even know what type of time people got at this point. Oh no! You no longer tears yet! The interceptors love Nick. Grievous bodily harm, listen. Alright. Villains. Knock somebody off their motorcycle at a crazy speed. And have the officer say that man should not be alive and you only get grievous grievous bodily. It's why they get up and go to work. Got one detained, got the driver. And getting drunk drivers off the road and banned is many interceptors' favourite part of the job. The people that go out and, and have a skinful and then get behind the wheel of a car, I think it's the ultimate neglect of duty of, of being a license holder. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. You're not only putting your own life at risk, but you're putting other people's lives at risk. And we see it first hand. We see 
fallout from drink drivers killing themselves or killing other people and we have to deal with the families we're the ones that pick up the pieces so for me personally it's always going to be target and drink drivers because it's it's absolutely deplorable i don't like drunk drivers It's Saturday night, and interceptor Chris Lambert is out on patrol when a call comes in. First one of a male has driven into a house, smashed the front door. Male's driven into the front of a house, so whether it's deliberate criminal damage. Like, like, let's think about this, because I know this is going to be a drunk driving situation. Like, you, like, how drunk are you to drive into the front of a house? Like, like, talk to me. You don't realize that you drunk? Like, like you don't realize, dang, I'm driving to the front of a house drunk. I'm, let me call an Uber. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, somebody that's... You know how drunk? He about to blow three, time, blow three times over. I don't know how to say We're not sure at the minute. Fancy the call there. Uh, Possible section five. All right, we're just getting updated that he's probably going to be a drink driver. The roads are really slippy tonight. It's been snowing for the last couple of days. Parts of the road are covered in black ice, so that combined with the drink driving um, element, it's never going to end well. Chris arrives just as the driver is being locked up. Are you the? Uh, is that your car? Yeah, actually, yeah. 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 Is anyone injured? No, luckily, they just sit the front of there. The driver swerved off the road and smashed into the front of this house. And there's a lot of damage, but thankfully only to the building and the car. Uh, and Lee. I can't even get a good night's sleep. I got a whole ass. What is this? Persia in my front window. Like, what is. There's no doubt how it's happened. Granted, it is snowing outside. Guys, blew 118 at the roadside. 118. Apparently, he's just been travelling up here at speed, swerved to miss a taxi. End up in this poor family's hallway. He's been locked up for uh, drink driving. Idiots. Don't take into consideration anyone else but themselves when they're jumping in the car and driving about. There were two people inside the house when the car hit. They've had a very close call. My mum's just seen the headlights coming in towards the front of the house. She's jumped up out the chair for what's this? And the car's just gone straight in the front door, took the door off its hinges. It's cracked the inside of the house, the glass is all smashed, it's all the way up the hallway. This part of Like, you have to really, like, repair this. Like, this might take some time. You gotta make sure the foundation of the crib good and support beams and this and that. This one had slid underneath the door because he's coming with that much force. My mum's dead shook up because obviously just not even a couple of feet to the left and it wasn't the dark was there, do you know what I mean? In custody, the driver blew more than three times over the limit. I told you. He later pleaded... I literally just said that. Car through the front of the door is three times over the limit drunk. I don't care what happened. <laughs> You're obviously three times over the limit if you put this car in that door like this. I don't care if there was a a, a a fox in the middle of the road and you used a, a diversity. What, what's the and you used what's the word I'm looking for? You used. I don't even know what the what the word is. You use oh evasive maneuvers to get up out of there. Be guilty to. I think I'm getting stupider. I don't know what it is. I, I couldn't think of that word. Drink driving and was ordered to pay £761 in fines and costs and was banned from driving for 28 months. Though given what he did, he's lucky to have avoided committing an even more serious crime. He got off light with that. Thankfully, you know, no one's been hurt, but there's people all over in the street around here and we could have been, uh, we could have been dealing with a fatality or, you know, multiple fatalities here. Coming up, past us now. Jack O T packs a suspected drug. Hey, hey! Let's don't don't tell me about it. Just be about it. Hello from three one three Fox Rod Urgent. 
the interceptors have many different ways of stopping dodgy motors. Stinger, it's like the Tesla Stinger. He's doing 90 mile an hour. We need to be like 120 plus to try and catch this vehicle. And one of the most effective is the Tactical Pursuit and Containment, or TPAC. Stop. Where three police cars box in a vehicle and force it to come to a stop. The TPAC, that's a really good tool if you've got somebody that's travelling along a dual carriageway and you want to get that vehicle stopped. We'll use the element of surprise. We'll just get them boxed straight away before they realise what's happening to them. It's bringing a resolution to the incident without anybody getting injured or anything getting damaged. It's a really effective tool, preemptive TPAC manoeuvre. It's Saturday night, and interceptor Paul Jacko Jackson has just started his shift. He's single crewed in the unmarked Beamer. We've only been in the door five minutes, and we've been past a job that's... <laughs> oh, that is the Avenger guy. That's funny. Actually, I'm going as we speak. We've got... To yeah, he should have grew his beard out after dude called him that. After he called him a P-E-D-O, he should have grew his beard out immediately. Information about a mail that's travelled from the concert area down to Liverpool to collect a large quantity of drugs. And the intelligence is that he's hired a van for it because the amount he's meant to be collecting is too big to fit in his car. We're fairly confident that there's at least one pinch point he must go through. So all of our cars are heading up there now with a view to doing a preemptive stop on the vehicle. Jacko's nicked hundreds of villains and won numerous awards and commendations in his two decades on the force. He's in his element tonight. These are the sorts That's that is funny. Decades on the force. He's in his element tonight. These are the sorts of jobs you relish being involved in. We train hard for them so that when it happens in reality, we're bang on it. And what we're aiming for is an element of shock and awe. They were like, like, imagine getting called that on the, in the line of duty. That is, that is a tough accusation. <laughs> That's forever gonna be funny to me. Like, like, what's the, uh, what's the rapper that Dutch Valley? I told you, I tried to tell people when that first, when the situation first got situation -y with du with Dutch Avelli, this is like off subject. I just made a complete turn. But like, I told y'all, ain't no coming back from that. Especially like with the, <laughs> with the text messages and I don't care what that girl said after the fact, but it was already written in stone. You see, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't a rapper no more. Won't know what's hit them till it's too late. The hired van is believed to be driving on an A road, and Jacko knows the perfect place to lie in wait and what to do when it turns up. Who else do you want me to sit in the garage forequarters and unmarked when he goes past that and pull out? Then I can be lead vehicle use can be round the corner on the 689 down toward Howden. Roger, we could all hide round the back of the garage. That works even better. I'm probably going to have to go front, aren't it? The high dues. Yes, yes. I'll go vehicle one, I'm unmarked, and then we can hide the RV behind me. Yes, yes. Jacko's going to be lead car, using his unmarked Beamer to hide the marked cars behind him and moving in front of the hired van when the T-Pack takes place. If he is going this it's route, it's going to take up the next five minutes. We're now looking to utilise a, a preemptive box. The difficulty you've got is we're in big vehicles, so it's about being tight and hiding behind each other and getting the box tight but this is what we train for and if we get it right which we usually do they'll be filling the pants and uh, we'll be filling the cells happy days it's coming your way now there's a third vehicle i think it's on its own past us now move out move out move out The key is to get all three police cars in position without them being seen by the driver of the hired van. Can you get bumper to bumper with me? We might get up before the roundabout. 
the vehicle we're after has just gone past us, so we're hoping to try and get a box on imminently. Box on, box on, box on. They're now out of town and the road's clear of oncoming traffic. It's time to tea pack. Move out, move out, move out. Jacko speeds past the vehicle before moving in front to block its path. While his colleagues pull up behind and alongside it, it's a textbook tea pack. Okay, well, nobody say that tea pack is aggressive. Imagine being a law abiding citizen getting tea pack. <laughs> like, like, whoa, what? Like, you would almost immediately fear for your life. Like,. The interceptor's plan has worked perfectly. The driver knows he has nowhere to go. Yeah. Nicking him is one thing, but it's what's in the back of the high-end van that's more important to Jacko. What? I've got my gloves. <laughs> Up until now, all the oh, it's gonna be that perico. The information they've been given about the driver and van is spot on, and the same seems to be true about the amounts of drugs involved. <laughs> There are bags and bags of vacuum packed cannabis. It's a canny half. They have more than a bit there you like, isn't there? In both the blue plastic sack and the suitcase, it's a humongous haul of this Class B drug. The colossal amount. Alea, could we request recovery? This yeah, but he's cooked. <laughs> he's cooked. Oh my God, he got pillows out the table, please. Yeah. The amount of drugs they found is surprising, as is the price. Five pence. <laughs> <laughs> He's not charging the going rate, I wouldn't suggest. Five pence. To be fair, it might be on personal use. <laughs> not a chance. Jacko's confiscated huge amounts of substances over the years, but this haul is a biggie, even for a veteran interceptor like him. I've seized a lot of cannabis in my time, but uh, the amount of editing I'm gonna have to do is insane. Why personally, I've so never seen blurry? it packed in this way. That's vacuum packed, so you're literally cramming as much as you possibly can in there, and there's and it weighs a fair amount. Jacko, it's a set amount, it's for the smell and for freshness, buddy. It's obviously a decent operation. The driver's been arrested for possession with intent to supply controlled drugs. I believe he's in the subject of being drug tested as well because he looks under the influence. We need to download his phone, gather as much evidence as we can. The package will be prepared and CID will be picking this one up in the morning. Yeah, the streets are sick without this. Morning. I think we'll relish getting this one because this isn't your ten a penny drug dealer. From start to finish, this job couldn't have gone smoother. Textbook stop. No damage, no injuries, happy days. And we've gotten a, a massive amount of drugs back. I couldn't begin to tell you how much that's worth, to be perfectly honest. I would say it's in the realms of tens of thousands of pounds, if not... Mm, I would say it looked like about 60. Maybe less. Back then, maybe more. Actually. Beyond that. The driver of the van was arrested for possession with intent to supply, and the investigation continues. It's been a fantastic job, taking over 10 kilos of high-grade cannabis off the streets and disrupting the supply chain. This is one of the biggest seizures for the team in the past 12 months. Somebody's taken the call been switched on enough to pass it to the appropriate person. They've done enough with it. So, Law, we've got the, the glory at the roadside. It's a massive team effort. It's a really, really good result. It yeah, the street's down bad under that hill. It takes a lot of time and effort to fully train a police dog. So, for the handlers that put the hard work in... Good lad! There's no better feeling than when their dog is the difference between a criminal getting away... Get yourself on your knees, don't run! ...or getting locked up. Don't run, stay still! We spend a lot of time training our dogs. And when they actually go out there and they catch someone that would have most definitely escaped had it not been for the dog. Fight. It's an ultimate buzz. It's a, it's a great team effort between the both of us. Please, 
Get on your knees! Just to see the look on the face when they're confronted by the canine teeth snarling at them. They've got no option. You know, if they decide they're going to run, they're going to get caught. If they decide they're going to fight, they're going to get bit. So the only option they've got is to give up, really, and just surrender. Whereas when they're faced with an officer, they can take the chances. They might decide to continue another runoff or they may decide to have a pop, but it doesn't happen very often when they've got a dog in front of them. It's early evening and dog handler Justin Moffat has been called to a potential break-in. It's a report from a building site in Norton. There's a male with a hoodie who's trying to dismantle one of the CCTV cameras. But I think the info has come from a monitoring company which is down south somewhere. A man has been caught on CCTV in a building site pulling a camera off its mount and hurling it to the floor. They're after the fuel out of the plant equipment and something. When has that ever worked? See, they thought they was just uh, cameras that, like, they thought they were unmonitored cameras, but people are getting smart, man. Somebody's watching from a remote location. Bigger stuff again, you know. Police believe they can call to a potential break-in. Sorry. It's time for joy. Yeah. I'll have to find There's a van with no legend They threw it You're up there he CCTV Couldn't there give us any more go And go from there really As he approaches the site A woman flags Justin down yeah, Hello. Hello. I was just coming down since it was any security because I've just seen a blue van driving up there through right. one of the panels is missing from the fence and he's gone in. Now he's up to no good because he's got his robe up to no lights. Right. I'll go and have a look there then. Yeah, we've had a call to the site actually. Okay, love, thanks. Yeah. Cheers. The woman seen two men getting out of a van and going into the building site through a gap in the fence. It's fairly urgent. The uh, unit that's going to the building site at Norton, uh, I've just been told there's a van with no lights. Have, has driven into the car park near the doctor's surgery and males have got out. Justin and Elsa now have to find two men and the van. In the pitch black site, they've not gone far when he hears something in the distance. Dogs have got sounds of an angle grinder on site. There's a blue Fiat. Uh, there's a male with an angle grinder. He hasn't seen me yet. About 50 yards away, someone appears to be using an angle grinder to cut into a container. Units here, urgently. It's time for Justin and his dog Elsa to make their move. Police with a dog! Stop! Brother is getting, my fault, brother is getting nicked red-handed. It's on camera. He is cooked. Stand still! No! Get on your knees, no! Get on your knees, both of you! Use your hands! Uh, Nine uh, 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 What idiots! Uh, Stay uh, there! Do not move! Uh, I'll deploy this dog! Uh, uh, Dogs, I've got two detained. I need an urgent unit here now. Uh, yes, send it on the hurry up. Uh, uh, Justin's got two men, but he isn't able to make the arrest on his own. Got two detained. I can't approach him unless I go with the dog. I've got a van that'll need recovering if you can start jacking that up. They're trying to break into the cabin with an angle grinder. Stay where you are and you'll be all right. Other officers are on their way, but they're finding it hard to locate Justin in the middle of the pitch black field. The street is where we think the site is, but we can't see anything. It's just a climb a fence. Though not long after... Use the little three words. ...they do manage oh. to find him. Good girl. Tried to break into the cabin, so that'll do for now. We find out exactly what the crack is. Be a temp burglary, I would have thought. The two suspected burglars are continuing to behave themselves just as well for the two legged cops as they did for Elsa. The yeah, these dudes are dumb. Hardest part is getting them out of the site and back to a place where the van can pick them up. From a dog handler's point of view, this job couldn't have gone any better. Oh, yes, yes. It's brilliant when you <laughs> the dog look happy. Turn up as a dog unit and get people that you would not normally catch. If I'd have been on my own with no dog, they'd have legged it and would potentially would have missed one or both of them. 
as it is, she's done her job brilliantly well. She's been vocal, telling them that they're there, and they've both surrendered straight away. Absolutely outstanding job. Nobody's had to be bitten, which is another bonus. And they've both been arrested for no injuries. I've obviously witnessed them trying to break into the cabin, so we've got absolute defences there. Um, brilliant job. Solved, solved another crime, which is always uh, a good feeling to have. There's been one downside to this otherwise textbook job. Justin and the other officers are going to have to do some laundry when they get home. Never pull Polish your boots before you come on duty, because I'm absolutely up to the eyes. But happy dog handler is a dirty dog handler. Is the dog not dirty? While his colleagues take the two How the dog manage to stay clean and suspected burglars dirty. off to the nick, Justin has a route round their van while he waits for the recovery truck. Maybe he's got a particularly stubborn bolt on his garden shed he needs removing, I don't know. Even the outside of the van suggests nefarious activity. We've obscured the number plates from wood, front and back, so that nobody's been able to give a reg number if they've seen it going on the site. <laughs> They said they're going to get a six months suspended sentence for this. If it hadn't been for that nurse, to be fair, that told us that... Oh, they got caught red-handed, grinder, or whatever that thing was, in hand. Were there. These lot had got away, probably. If I can find her again, I'll thank her very much. Justin's colleagues have radioed through. Now they've confirmed the identity of the two men. The father and son who were notorious criminals of the, uh, of the patch. A little way off there. Father and son, and so this is a family thing. Uh, beat tonight, but um, nevertheless, uh, the normal standard is that they get caught, and sure enough, they've been caught again. So, if it doesn't make the interceptors, it'll make the world's dumbest criminals. So, fantastic. The two oh, men were later convicted of attempted burglary and going equipped two to steal. Idiots. The father received a 12 week suspended prison sentence, a community order, and a £115 victim surcharge. His son received a six-month community order and a £20 victim surcharge for the same offences. Justin's hey, had a good... Listen, W-U-K, man. W-U-K, man. Hey, salute. You get in trouble here, you don't really get in trouble. That is crazy. Night, but reckons it's his dog, Elsa, it's who deserves whatever. the credit. You know, her presence alone has stopped them from fleeing. They've seen her, thought, we're not going to wear... Bro, this is a country full of slaps on the wrist in the judicial system. You getting slaps on the wrist, left and right out Fight here. with her, and, and you saw they gave themselves up straight away. Salute so, them. yeah, full marks to her. She, she's won the day to day. Still to come, a night. Ah, 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 ah. Just get into it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We ain't got to talk about it. Just be about it. Where is that? It's a busy Saturday night in Middlesbrough. And while the majority of revelers are having a good time, and more importantly behaving themselves, interceptor Liam Sewell has received a call about a man in the town who's carrying something very dangerous. We've got a report, a couple of bobbies of the driving down Albert Road. Someone's flagged them down, quite disturbing. Report a male with a CS gas canister. The bobbies have seen this male suspect run off. Described as a five foot seven, slim build with short hair. So it's going to be a bit of a needle in the haystack, but we've got CCTV looking because, you know, we kind of people out and about in the town with CS gas. As Liam yes, Blue lights yes. it towards the town centre, an alarming update comes through. The suspects just attacked a doorman with the spray. He's wearing a navy t-shirt, shirt and hat, besides, along at the stop. We have got to the fiesta in the street. Dogs on route. Liam's first to get to the bar where the alleged attacker has gone, and he's being held by the door staff. Where is CS guy? Which one? The chap who's gone in the pub. Here we go. Quick word with you, mate. Quick word with you, kid. Just take it over there. You've got him, David. Bros were really drunk. Right, mate. Who, who, so first and foremost, he went into the barber shop and asked for that? Listen, you're under arrest, all right? What for? Being an impression of a firearm. A firearm? It's alleged that you sprayed someone in the face with it, mate. All right. What's happening? They've done something Yo, on you, shouldn't have, mate. Saturday night, if you like a party. The lad swiftly in cuffs and is given a quick pat down. They will give him a. CS gas is tear gas? 
Full search back at the neck. Where did you even get that from? I so, mate, you don't have to say anything, but I'm a defence documentary question, so you let Ryan part. And if you do say, maybe give me the evidence, all right? The lad's safely in the back of the van. Liam now needs to find out what happened and gather some evidence. Oh, so yeah, I'll make the boys being locked up, but we haven't got the canister. It's been dropped outside Can the pub. See Chances yeah. are another party goes picked it up, but you know we got this dangerous offender off the streets, and then um, we'll get fixed up with the domino who's being sprayed. Mate, we was inside there, like, yeah. fighting, trying to get him with pepper spray me all over my face. Yours. Mate, what was he wearing? I, I just need to see him. I know you can't make because it might go ID procedures later on. Yeah, two guns. He's taking them off, spraying me all over. Can you breathe? It's CCTV, mate. But I'll tell you one thing, man. Is it? Mm -hmm. All right, mate, you start getting that burnt off then, the CCTV and stuff, and someone will be round to get up a statement off you. Cheers, mate. All right, you. Take care. Liam sees all sorts while at work, but this one is a... I ain't never heard of that. <laughs> somebody hit somebody with some tear gas and then ran in the club? What are you doing? Bit of a shocker. He's obviously on a night out, you know, where's he got... Bro, finna get like seven years. They classify that as a firearm? He said firearm when he pulled up. <laughs> this CS gas from... You know, it's classed as a firearm. He shouldn't have possession of it. And then yeah, you out of there. That's tough. On some drunks, you just did some dumb stuff. That was stupid. And they go and use it. You know, it's, it's really is taking it up a level. You know, people have scraps in the town. All if you're going to go out causing trouble in the town, the dormant are going to fling it out, aren't they? As Liam arrives at Middlesbrough Nick, one of his colleagues radios through, saying that he may still have the gas on him. Yeah, we're going to search him because some suggesting it might be down his kegs. We'll have a quick look at that when we get in. Right. As soon as he sits down, the gas canister is clear to see. What's that in your sock, kid? Right, so we're going to seize that off your mate, all right? Does that feel like the party? Pepper spray. So it's a, an illegal weapon in the UK, well have that. And people buy them off the internet. It's just uh, usually getting from the continent. It's just uh, a, quite a strong, potent pepper spray. Not what we use. It's classed as a firearm in the UK, so he's been arrested for possession of a, a firearm. That's oh man, this is a tough. This is a tough. Uh, you finna get a charge, charge. A serious charge, but this lad doesn't seem too bothered. I'm 27 years young. I'm from T side. I'm gonna be in your thirties when you get out. T side, and I'm five foot eleven. Wow. The suspect's in no fit state to give a statement, so he's put in a cell to sleep it off. Despite his inebriated state, Liam's surprised by how lightly he's taking it. <laughs> I mean, the lad doesn't really give a damn, does he? He's, he's... You think this is America or something where pepper spray is legal, buddy? You somewhere else. Just having a laugh. He also seems under the impression he can order a takeaway from the cells. Yeah. The chicken korma. Yeah. With egg fried rice. Yeah. And also, I'm getting an all-day breakfast with sausage beans, mushrooms. Bro is not even on earth. Bro is at the chippy. Oh, like some. Watch it, admit. It, it it just shows you the measure of the person, you know. Can we see what? How did? What time did he get? Just doesn't surprise you that he has committed this type of offence. Gonna be looking at a serious charge there, you know, possession of a firearm there, and he's used it. He is out on a drink with his can of CS gas. You know, that's the measure of the man, and this is the safest place for him, you know. The man later pleaded guilty to assault and possession of a weapon designed or adapted for the discharge of CS gas. Oh my God. Played out. He played out, he got a lesser charge. He was ordered to pay £250 in compensation and received a 13-month suspended prison sentence. Bro. You know what? It is what it is now with these sentences. It just be crazy to me, but like, salute for the criminals, I guess. Like, they just doing stuff with no real consequences out here. That's tough. Tell them, leave a like, comment. I'm gone.